Scripture explains that the Lord has written His law on every heart. The Creator's holy nature is revealed to every man through conscience. Conscience is our God-given knowledge of right and wrong. Therefore, man knows that his Creator is both the moral lawgiver and the judge. Do you have a conscience? I believe I do have a conscience. Do you believe that everyone has a conscience? Absolutely. But do you have a conscience? Yes. Where did it come from? I don't know. The Bible makes it very clear that the knowledge of God is written on our hearts, even that uh, knowledge of right and wrong. Have you ever told a lie? Yes. All right, what does that make you? A liar. Liar, right? Have you ever stolen anything? Yes. What does that make you? A thief. A thief. Just supposing you're, you're, you're in a shop, in a store someplace, and there's something that you, you really need, and it's just sitting there and nobody's around watching it, you say to yourself, oh, I haven't brought my wallet, forgot that, nobody looking, in the pocket. And it goes in, you walk out, nobody challenges you, and you got away with it. Inside, what are you thinking? At night, when you go to bed, what are you thinking? And I think anybody knows fully well that the thoughts will go round in the head, I stole that. This is a conscience. Have you always obeyed your God-given conscience? No. No. Have you ever used your Creator's name, God who gave you taste buds and eyesight and every good gift, ever used His name as a curse word? Yeah. I have. Jesus said, you've heard it said you should not commit adultery, but I say to you, if you look at a girl lustfully, you commit adultery in your heart. Have you ever looked at a girl lustfully? Yeah. Okay, so you broke that commandment, right? Yeah. God says he has written his law in every human conscience. So they are all without excuse. Everyone knows that he's a sinner. Everyone knows he's broken God's laws. Everyone knows he hasn't done right. We have the ability to know right and wrong. We have the ability to know what is good. Then God also must know. He must be the, the ultimate creator. revelation of, of morality, of yeah. what's right, of what's good. Because how would we know what was right or wrong? Yeah, I know it's that's him. amazing. The fact that every man knows right from wrong, okay. what does that tell us about God's character and nature? That he's just. If God were to judge based on the holy standard, would you be guilty or innocent? Guilty. So if you were guilty as a blaspheming, lying thief, on the day of judgment, would God send you to heaven or hell based on the Ten Commandments? Uh, I would definitely go to hell. Do we have to face the Almighty Judge? And yes, we do. And that being so, we would be found guilty of whatever we've done. The conscience tells me there is someone to whom I am accountable. He is my creator. And I know that I have not lived up to his standards. Have you ever used God's name in vain, like, oh my God? Yeah. Can you think of a time when your conscience just screamed at you? Something you did in the past where it's like, Alan, don't do that, or Alan, you shouldn't have done that. Yeah. If you can remember that, do you think our Creator can? Yes. Do right. you think conscience tells us we need a Savior? Yes. And you know that it took a, a, a God of personal love and concern, but of unbending Justice is the only way it can be. We can't get him to change his laws. He's the only one who could have put that conscience within us so that we experienced. It's really God that we're experiencing uh, through our conscience. Though creation shows forth God's wonders, it presents a mixed message. For in the midst of such beauty and order, we observe disease, decay, and death. Not surprisingly, it is the Bible alone which explains this apparent contradiction. In the beginning, God created everything perfect. However, man was given a free will and a choice. Sadly, he chose to rebel against his creator. As God warned Adam, sin resulted in suffering and death. The curse described in Genesis affected all creation, and today we see the horrible results. However, there's good news. Before time began, God had a plan to rescue mankind. 
Because the penalty for sin is death, the Creator came to earth as a man, lived a sinless life, and died to pay the penalty for our sins. He then rose from the dead and offers forgiveness and eternal life to all who will trust Him. As this film has been portraying in the creation, we see the wisdom and power, the wonder of God, his concern for his creatures. But you can't look at it without realizing something's wrong. It's like we have a memory deep within our conscience of a time when there was a paradise and it's lost. God made a beautiful world. It was perfect to start with, but because of man's sin, now it's a groaning world. So we see beauty and we see groaning and we see ugliness, uh, but it all uh, seems contradictory, but that's only because it is a fallen world. It's so easy to see the God of wonders uh, just on a stroll through whatever neighborhood we might live in. Uh, you know, birds fluttering overhead, the majestic beauty of flowers, the, the glory of a sunset. And yet many of you may be troubled like I was as a young man, trained in biology. Well, what about all the birth defects, disease, disaster, fires, floods, famines, plagues? Where is God in all of these things? Is, is that the God of wonders who did that? The Bible tells us quite clearly, no. The God of wonders is the one who created the wonders we see, the marvels of, of beauty and design. Unfortunately, man rebelled against God. But what God did was absolutely phenomenal. Even though we rebelled against Him and we don't deserve to even live, we don't deserve existence, He stepped into history to become one of us. Jesus said, God so loved the world, so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. Would you give your Son, knowing that He's gonna be hated and persecuted and scourged, beaten, mocked and crucified? God knew what would happen. And I often think of Jesus. He knew from eternity past what he would face. Someone might wonder how a man who walked the dusty roads of uh, Israel so long ago could possibly uh, save us from death. How could he possibly raise us to new life? But remember, the Christ who died for us is the creator of life. What an awesome God, the fact that he would actually step into history to pay the penalty for our sin and then offer a free gift of salvation to save us from what we did. You see, in actuality, we committed high treason against the God of creation, and yet he loved us so much, he stepped into history to provide the payment for our sins so that we can spend eternity with him. Wow, what an awesome God. According to the scriptures, this great creator is the one who not only made everything, but who redeemed us from our sins. Jesus Christ came to this earth, lived a perfect life in our place, died upon the cross, his blood was shed. Three days later, he's resurrected. He lives today. And whosoever believes in him and acknowledges him and acknowledges who we are and what we've done and ask for forgiveness and repent from our sins, can enter into a relationship with the Creator that will last for eternity. This is the good news. Perhaps the most wondrous of all the aspects of creation is that God would not leave us alone. He sent His own Son to restore things, and we look forward to His coming again. When Once again, the wolf and the lamb will lie down together. They'll not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, but the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. That marvelous passage in Isaiah. Wow, God's redeeming love. That's the greatest wonder of all. Truly, our Creator is the God of wonders. And the greatest wonder is His immeasurable love. Scripture states that God is love, and He demonstrated this love toward us by stepping down from heaven to offer His life so that we might be reconciled to Him forever. Jesus Christ is the Creator. On the cross, He bore our sins and then rose from the dead. The Lord now offers everlasting